See, what happens is, is we're broken people and we live in a broken world and we interact with each other. That's the recipe for a perfect storm, isn't it? That's the recipe for hurts, okay? And so what happens is, is we get hurt and either we don't want to deal with it because it's too painful or we don't know how, which I think is often the case. And that hurt, we don't like feeling hurt, but without knowing it, hurt turns into anger. And then anger over time turns into bitterness. And then bitterness turns into what the Bible calls a hardened heart. Number one is acknowledge the hurt. We've got to acknowledge the hurt. It took me a lot of counseling to realize how essential this was in the forgiveness process because of the things I went through as a kid. I've spent my whole adult life either pretending they didn't happen or minimizing the effects it had on me. And I sat down with a counselor a couple years ago and he finally said, and he said, because until you acknowledge it, until you face it, and until you feel it, you can't forgive it. So while you're still pretending it never hurt you, and while you're still pretending it didn't happen, and while you're still pretending you're too strong as an adult to be affected by what happened to you as a child, you can't forgive what you don't acknowledge. So I want you to, let's talk about it. Let's, let's admit that it hurt. Let's talk about how has it changed the whole course of your life being abandoned like that? And how has it changed the way you see people being abused? You gotta face it and feel it so that you can forgive it. Second thing is, and this one's tough, it might make you angry, we got to surrender our right to punish. This is, this is huge because I, I, I got to be honest, I've lived for several years as an adult and, and especially as a pastor and I went, oh, I forgive that person. Oh, I'm still going to make them pay. Don't, don't get that twisted. But I forgive them, right? You know that feeling. There's this verse that you'll probably be familiar with and I, I needed a counselor to help me tie it to the forgiveness process. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. I was talking with a couple, and I love this couple, and some mistakes have been made on both sides of the marriage. Most recently, he made some mistakes, some big ones. She's forgiven him, but she continues to use the situation for leverage in the relationship, for control. And we do this. The only way for real reconciliation is I have to surrender my right. I'm not letting him off the hook. I'm surrendering my right to say, God, I'm not going to be the one who punishes you are. I'm not going to be the judge and the jury and the executioner anymore. I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to give away my right to punish. Forgiveness is about freedom. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is about your freedom. I'll tell you what forgiveness isn't. If I look, it's not justifying their actions. See, I, I've thought forever, I can't forgive. I can't say that I'm letting you off the hook because if I do, then it reminds me of what you did and you might not realize how bad it was what you did and I gotta make sure you know what you did was wrong so I can't just forgive. Because... Forgiveness is not saying what you did is okay. It's not okay that you left. It's not okay that you hurt. It's not okay that you lied. It's not okay that you abused. My forgiving you doesn't justify any of those things. I'm not letting you off the hook. God says, I'll take care of the wrath. There are consequences for people who hurt my kids, but we don't have to be, a, we don't have to worry about that. Forgiveness is not a guarantee that there will be reconciliation in the relationship. And I'm going to set some people free with that here in a second. And forgiveness is not a guarantee that we're going to continue doing life together. Forgiveness is for us. Forgiveness is our heavenly father saying, I've got a prescription for you to, to, to layer by layer healing by healing, day by day. Make sure that the hurts that happened back then don't continue to hurt you today because I want you set free. That's what it is, okay? So we're gonna acknowledge the hurt. We're gonna surrender our right to punish. Now, now it gets real tough. Pray for them. Pray for them. What? Oh, I'll pray for him. Oh, I will pray. 
God, I pray you take away, and I pray you, and I pray you, and if I could control lightning I, and give them COVID twice after the vaccine, and I pray. You've heard it. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who do what? I, I really believe it's not so much for the person who's hurt you, it's for you. It's for me. Listen, listen, because remember what I said? That hurt, it turns to anger, and that anger turns to bitterness, and that bitterness turns to a hardened heart, and that's what starts to change the way we live, and it takes a lot of anxiety and depression producing energy to live with a hardened heart, and every time I can humble myself to be obedient to my Father, to go, I'm not letting anybody off the hook. I'm not justifying anybody's actions, but I'm actually going to pray that God would bless them today. I'm actually going to pray that God would help them maybe come to full repentance and see what has happened. I'm going to pray that God God would take care of them, that he would show them the same grace I've needed 10 million times. It's so painful to pray that, but here's what happens. Every single time you pray that prayer, uh, you know, they used a lot of agricultural analogies because that's what everybody understood. It's like our hearts get hardened, and you can throw seed on hardened ground like that, but it won't produce a thing, right? But every time I decide to pray for that person who hurt me, it's like, it's like I'm tilling that soil one layer at a time, one layer at a time, one layer at a time, and each time, my heart starts to get softer and softer and softer, and pretty soon you can throw some seed there and something beautiful can happen. Where, where only death and desolation was, now it can be something beautiful. That's what we want. It begins to soften our hearts, and God says it's, it's, it's when your heart is in this condition that you actually have peace and joy, and you don't have to live with your soul like this all the time. He says, I can set you free from this stuff, but I want to, it's a painful process, but could you pray for that person? Number four, be open to reconciliation. I'll be honest, this one made me real mad when I heard it. Romans 12, 18, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If there is a gigantic difference between forgiveness and fellowship, they're not the same thing. Forgiveness, go ahead and put that slide up. Forgiveness, I do. That's on me. That's on you. That's what I do. I decide I'm going to acknowledge what happened. I decide with, with God's help, and I'm going to help you do this. I'm going to give you a prayer to help you do some of this stuff because it feels overwhelming. I decide to go to God and say, God, help me to surrender my right to punish. I do that. I decide to pray for the people who have hurt me, even when it's hard to even utter those words out loud. I do the forgiveness work. Fellowship? That takes two people. That takes multiple people. Fellowship happens if and only if there's true repentance. We got too many fake repentance. We got too much fake repentance in the world right now. I'm sorry that that was misunderstood. I'm so no, 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 no. An apology? Go read jo uh, Genesis 45 through 50, that story of Joseph and his brothers, and you're going to see real forgiveness and real reconciliation. And it happened because his brothers came and threw themselves at his feet, and they said, what we did was wrong. We are sorry. Will you forgive me? That's an apology. An apology that you can rebuild a relationship on starts with, I was wrong. I am sorry. Will you forgive me? It's got to be true repentance. No fake repentance. You don't rebuild a relationship on fake repentance. You got to actually see change. Forgiveness and fellowship are two entirely different things. And you don't have to feel guilty for drawing that line in the sand if the things aren't present to make a relationship possible. You do it the as far as it depends on you, that's the forgiveness. We have to do some things for the fellowship to be a part. And you don't just not have to feel guilty about that. There, there's some relationships where you wouldn't even be using wisdom to re-engage with. You still forgive because that's what sets you free. But it's different than the fellowship, isn't it? There's this general biblical theme that definitely always points us to restoration and reconciliation when possible. But even the Word of God says, but there are going to be some special times when that's just not possible. The Apostle Paul tells two guys that he's mentoring, Timothy and Titus, that he's like, you have the call of God on your life, and you have been, you've been letting some people back into your life that it's causing you more harm than good, and you got to stop it. Here's what he says. Here's what he says to Timothy. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. 
Opponents must, here it is, must be gently instructed. That's fruits of the Spirit. That's not, I'm going to tell you what you did. I, I'm going to get you. Everything I can do as it depends on me, I'm going to work towards reconciliation. But there's just some special cases. Oftentimes it's things like where addictions are involved or, or mental health is involved or abuse is involved. There's just some times where it's like, I, I don't have to have the fellowship, but for my own future, for my own freedom, I got to have the forgiveness. That's the difference. And I believe this is so difficult that we have to pray for divine strength and healing and freedom. We got to get God involved in the process. This stuff's too difficult to do on our own. Listen, if you could do this on your own, you already would have. I, I'm telling you, this stuff hit me so hard when I started learning it, because if I'd, have, if I'd have found this freedom on my own, I already would have. I need the power of the Holy Spirit in my life, in my heart, in my soul, helping me to walk through these steps, because you know the deal. It's like, it's like there's this glass wall between us and forgiveness or between us and the freedom we want from what happened. And it's like, I just don't know how to get there. We need the power of God to help us get there. Jesus was teaching his best friends how to pray. And uh, he said, guys, he talked about an everyday prayer with them. We now call it the Lord's Prayer. And remember, there's a line in there that says, forgive me of my trespasses because I'm working on forgiving other people of their trespasses. And he said, this is so hard to do. You need to pray about it every single day. I mean, that's an interesting thing to make part of the Lord's prayer, isn't it? Jesus goes, no, 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 no. I, I've, I've been hurt like you've been hurt. I know betrayal. <laughs> Some of you are a part of it. I know pain. You're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to need God to help you get through this stuff.